D, wait for it. Light bulb. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? And welcome to my Week in Review, where I come to you every Sunday with three entertainment stories that I personally find interesting, and then we uh, discuss them down below. Also down below in the description, you can find the articles uh, to all three stories that I read to bring you this uh, video. Um, and you can read them and come up with your own opinion. You don't just have to take my word for it. Um, also, before we get down to it, I just want to say that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, within the past six months, YouTube did a uh, old account cleanse and bot purge, and there was some collateral damage. Uh, so please consider liking, subscribing, and and sharing my videos and I thank you in advance. So why don't we just dive right into these three stories. So for the first story, uh, Francis Lawrence uh, turned the Hunger Games sequel films Catching Fire and Mockingjay 1 and 2 into international box office hits. And now he's been tapped to do it again. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter reports that Lionsgate is indeed bringing Lawrence back to direct the Hunger Games prequel film, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which will be based on the book of the same name by original Hunger Games trilogy author Suzanne Collins. In a somewhat controversial turn, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes will follow the young version of Hunger Games villain, President Cornelius Snow, who will now be the hero of the story? Uh, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes sounds like the kind of interesting and potentially dark turn that Francis Lawrence is known for, i.e. Constantine and Red Sparrow. Now, Lawrence himself had hinted that he could be returning to the Hunger Games franchise last fall while doing press for his Apple TV Plus series C. Yeah, I've definitely been talking to Suzanne about it and to Lionsgate about it, Lawrence told People Now. It's something I would absolutely love to do. Also returning to the Hunger Games movie franchise will be screenwriter Michael Arden and producer Nina Jacobson, who worked on all four of Lionsgate's Hunger Games movies to the total sum of $3 billion box office haul. Lionsgate chairman Joe Drake issued a statement that praises and hypes Collins' forthcoming prequel book as a surefire hit with uh, fans of the Hunger Games franchise. Suzanne's new book has been worth the wait. It offers everything fans could have hoped for and expect for the Hunger Games, while also breaking new ground and introducing an entirely new canvas of characters. In her own statement, Suzanne Collins praised the chance to re-team with the studio on another adaptation of her books. Lionsgate has always been the cinematic home for the Hunger Games, and I'm delighted to be returning to them with this new book. Um, now, I have to say, I'm not 100% sure I'm sold on all of this. Now, I like the Hunger Games trilogy. I liked the books better than the films. Um, the first film, I really didn't care for that much. The second film is by far the best. I did a ranking of them. You can check that out here. But uh, I feel like the last two really fell short also. Um, I feel like making, I feel like the first book should have been turned into two movies, and then the last book should have just been one movie. Um, but with that whole thing where they're all like, oh, we're going to make these, um, the last movie two movie or last book two movies they can they seem to do that with everything and I, I feel like that's not needed so that's my first story of the day so for my second story of the day um, while season two has only just wrapped it appears as though pre-production on the Mandalorian season three is already well underway over at Disney plus variety is reporting that the Mandalorian season three is officially in the works over at Disney plus with series creator John Favreau said to be busy writing season three for a while and that the art department has been creating concepts for the third season for several weeks. With the series returning a significant amount of lead time before shooting, the production design department actually began working on designing sets just yesterday, presumably work uh, remotely for the time being. After an immensely popular freshman outing last fall, The Mandalorian was quickly renewed for a second season and was fortunately able to finish filming earlier this year, prior to the worldwide production shutdown in March. Now, the new season is currently slated for an October premiere date, but that's likely subject to change if the post-production is unable to be completed in time. Now, season two will see Pedro Pascal return as Din Djarin, aka The Mandalorian, and will also once again feature Baby. Baby Yoda. Uh, the supporting cast will include Carl Weathers as Grief Karga, Gina Carano as Cara Dune, Ming Na Wen as Fennec Shad, 
Emily Swallow as the armorer, Michael Benya as the fellow bounty hunter, and Rosario Dawson as the fan favorite Ahsoka Tano in her live action debut. I'm super excited for that. Um, I love Rosario Dawson and I love Ahsoka Tano, so what's there not to love? Um, plus all the fan art for that is just really great. I am excited about this. I'm glad to see that uh, Disney Plus has faith in this show. I have to say though, a lot of stuff is in development over at Disney, but as this quarantine goes on, um, I'm I'm getting the sense that we're going to see a lot of these projects being dropped, um, you know, like, uh, you know, and they're just going to sink like a rock in water. So we'll see how things keep going and how they develop as long as, as long as this uh, quarantine um, keeps going. So that's my second story of the day. So for my last story of the day, Disney's Star Wars sequel trilogy's woes continue as Diamond Select Toys president Chuck Hersia confirmed there is a lack of demand for the products from the three films. As first reported by Bleeding Fool, Tercia did an interview with Rebel Scum where he discussed Diamond Select Toy acquisition of Gentle Giant. Now, Tercia was quite honest about the lack of interest in the sequel trilogy toys. When asked if there were plans to continue making product from The Last Jedi, Tercia responded, As you know, whatever was done before last year, Diamond Select Toys had no control over. Now, GG LTD made those decisions, but as I said, Dev is still the guide for the brand, and we are aware of all the past history. He added, I will say from what we have seen, the sales on the products from 7 and 8 were not too strong. I know those movies, as well as 9, had their fans, and those fans might say GG just never did the right products or characters or formats, and they might be correct. However, we can only go by what we know. For sure, the door is not closed to the ST products, and we are working on a couple of pieces for The Rise of Skywalker right now. Tercia does note that they are keeping a very close eye on it and listening to the fan feedback. So if there is demand, we're happy to satisfy it. Rebel Scum's Chris Wayman then asks if there will be a more character products for The Rise of Skywalker, as currently they only have a Sith Trooper minibus, the Kylo Ren Dreamer Premier Collection statue, and the Kylo Ren Legends in Three Dimensions bust. In his question, Wayman indicates there are some very requested characters like Emperor Palpatine, Poe Dameron, Zori Bliss, Bamboo Frick, Lando, and C-3PO. Tercia responds, As I mentioned before, we are working on some, but I have to ask, are you sure there are lots of demand for these very requested characters? He adds, The overall demand for bust and Star Wars product is not what it was 10 or even 5 years ago. Tarsia goes on to state that it's not just a gentle giant problem, but an industry-wide issue. It's not just a GG issue either. The brand is very strong with The Mandalorian and The Clone Wars and more new content to come. But you all know what the production runs on collector products were in the past compared to now. He continues, We would very much love to make more products from the new movie. It's not like we're sitting behind our desk wringing our hands thinking how we can stick it to the fans and not make bus they want that will make us money. Tarsia then bluntly states he's not seeing the demand from fans for the sequel trilogy characters. We just, as of yet, have not seen enough fans that would want to buy a bust, have the, that personal affection for some of those new characters that make sense to justify going to production. But for some, we're watching it, and perhaps as more time passes, fans' affection for those characters will grow. Now, the lack of demand for Disney Star Wars sequel trilogy toys shouldn't come to as a surprise to the audience. I mean, audiences didn't like the films for good reason, given the, the films actively set out to break down and destroy the iconic characters of the original trilogy, as well as undo an entire mythos of the Force. The Last Jedi has a 43% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes and a 4.3 user on Metacritic. The Rise of Skywalker has an 86% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, but a 4.8 user score on Metacritic. 
Not only do audiences not like Disney's new films, but the company itself reported their merchandise sales for Star Wars was down in the third quarter report last year. The Q3 report in 2019 read, in part, the increase at our customer products business was due to the growth at our merchandise licensing and retail businesses. Growth at merchandise licensing was primarily due to higher revenue from merchandise based on Toy Story, partially offset by the decrease from Star Wars merchandise. In fact, Star Wars merchandise sales have been in decline since 2016, and it's not just merchandise sales. The entire franchise has been in decline according to Jedi Temple Archive. They reported in 2018, Star Wars merchandise sales have been declining ever since October 2016, and remember that Disney's uh, fi uh, fiscal year ends in September. But not only merchandise seems to be affected, since Star Wars book sales and comic book sales are also down. So Star Wars as a whole seems to be in decline at the moment. YouTuber Drunk3PO, and I'll leave a link to his video uh, down below, uh, believes one of the problems with current Disney Star Wars toys is their lack of diversity. Now wait for it. Um, he notes that all of the sequel trilogy figures look alike. He explains, Rey wears the same thing in every movie. Even in the snow scene, she's in the same thing. Whenever she's piloting, she's in the same thing. Everything is the same. In comparison, the original trilogy had Leia in multiple outfits from her slave Leia look to her Hoth gear. He explains, I could get her in different forms to her in different situations where she would rule and where in some she would run, where she would do her thing. Now, Long story short, because that was a lot of stuff to get in there, uh, the, and the article is really good if you want to read it, but basically they're just saying merchandise sales are down. And if you look in the past, merchandise sales have what is what has kept Star Wars alive for so long. I mean, there was such a long gap between the original trilogy and then the, the special editions and then the prequels and then from the prequels to this new sequel trilogy. And what's kept that alive is is the fans, is is the, the, the original fans. And I think that, you know, what Disney has done to Star Wars is a travesty. I think that it's, it, I know a lot of people want to say, oh, you're just being, um, you know, a whiny little fanboy, but I have to tell you right now, uh, if you want your franchise to keep thriving, you'll, you, there has to be some kind of, of a nerd Roddick says it the best, customer service. Um, you have to please your fans somehow. And you're not doing, they're obviously not doing that over at Disney because we're not coming back to buy stuff. Now, I have to be honest with you. I don't mind the new trilogy. I know a lot of people want to be all like, oh, you don't like strong, powerful women. That's not it. It's a bad story. And the characters are so undeveloped. Even Rey. There's so much not developed with Rey as a character. And I think that Disney did not approach this uh, this uh, franchise correctly. And they just let it uh, fall by the wayside. And they're not... I don't think they're actively trying to fix the problem. So... Yeah, there's so much more to talk about it, but this is this is just proof that uh, Disney really needs to fix things, and if they don't, then they're just they're this is going to be a dying uh, franchise that's not going to make very much money. So tell me, what do you guys think about those three stories? Are you going to see the prequel for The Hunger Games, uh, a song of uh, a ballad of songbirds and snakes? Are you excited about it? How do you feel about Snow being the good guy in this one? And how do you feel about uh, uh, Francis Lawrence coming back as the director for this one? I personally didn't think he did that great of a job. I thought the second movie was the best and he directed the, the first one and the last two, but whatever. Anyways, um, how do you feel about uh, Mandalorian getting a season three? Woo woo! or at least it was announced. And then tell me, how do you guys feel about Star Wars action figures or merchandise in general not selling? Do you agree with um, Nerd3PO and the fact that all of the Star Wars uh, uh, figurines, for instance, Ray, he brought up, they all are the same and they're not wearing any different outfits. Um, go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. You know, I won't mind. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. I will see you guys next Sunday on my Week in Review. You guys have a healthy and safe week. Bye! Hey nerds, if you like this video, go ahead and click that Geek What icon and subscribe. And if you like this video, go ahead and join me every Sunday with my Week in Review.